Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokegame here with round three of the DPP Cup. This time I'm playing Shade, and uh, we actually had a little funny conversation over here uh, because I found him on an alt. Uh, but in any case, let's actually just start it up. I love DPP, you guys know that. Hopefully you guys... Oh, this is the perfect lead for me. Um, have fun. Uh, basically, we're on main, so I'm putting this. Otherwise, I wouldn't really care. Uh... Anyway, I don't care too much about Azelf because I do have a, spin a spinner that can, in theory, beat the uh, Hazard Control Mon. So I'm actually just going to get on my Stealth Rock. This could be Banded. I doubt you taunt a T-Tar. So I'm going to get on my Stealth Rock right here. And if he wants the boom, that's fine. I'll go right for the Pursuit otherwise. Um, I could definitely see him booming though, but he does switch out. So this is going to activate his Cobra Berry, yeah. But we're also going to be able to do a ton of damage. He reveals the Machamp. Do we see Leftovers? No. Alright, so Machamp is an issue. A champ is definitely an issue. How am I want to? How do I want to deal with this mod? I don't want him paybacking. I really want hazards up with Skarm too. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Skarm anyway. I feel like my uh, Skarm could just take this guy on. Yeah, he goes right for the dynamic punch. Obviously, Skarm can take it on with the uh, with the Brave Bird. And he, I can't tell if he's faster or not because obviously sand doesn't affect me. Let's go for Brave Bird here, see if we can break through. If we can, we'll do a lot to Machamp, about 70% I want to say. Uh, and, and also being able to catch potentially Azelf is nice. At the same time, I kind of want to Spike though. Spike is kind of risky though. I think Brave Bird is a smarter play. Let's see, we do not end up breaking through unfortunately, on Fort. Uh, he can Ice Punch to knock me out. It's what it does. Um, Machamp is just one of those mons that some teams can just tear through. I don't have too many outs for it, uh, but let's go for Brave Bird here. He's just gonna Ice Punch. He should go for Ice Punch. Yeah, it's, it's Machamp, so I can't really get upset. Actually, well, let me get up a Spike just in case he randomly switches. I would still like a Spike in the long run of things because I do have a Shaman in the back and chipping away at Machamp. Very, very nice for me. So I'm gonna go right to Tentacruel. I'm actually gonna set up a T Spike. Um, I can spin right here, but I, I'm thinking. He could Dynamic Punch. Machamp doesn't typically run Earthquake. Uh, he probably will Dynamic Punch or go Azelf. But if I get up this T-Spike, I at least put Machamp on the timer when it comes back. Bad that we say sorry in this situation isn't really rebut. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, Bronzong ends up coming out, which is more than likely Trick Room. And this is actually a threat. We'll spin away the Hazards, though. As he's dual screens. Interesting. Wow, 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 wow. I like that. We're going to knock him off though because if he does have a Reflect, I can at least, um, or if he does have a Light Clay, I can at least get rid of that as he gets up his Reflect. Nice. And what I can do is actually go out to my Rotom, expecting him to want to boom. I think, I'm thinking he might have like a DD Tar in the back or something like that. So what Rotom can actually do is trick him and lock him into a move. Doubles out into Azelf though, so we will be able to break that or knock that thing out through the, um, through the screens. Yeah, we will be able to knock it out through the screen, so Azelf is gone, and Machamp is probably going to come right back in. Machamp is a huge threat. I'm really hoping it's not Lumberry and it's actually like Custap or something like that, because then uh, having the Sandstorm plus the uh, Poison will really be working against my opponent, obviously. So, um, having the dual screens up is a little bit annoying. Uh, light screen is going to be there for about four more turns, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, Reflect should be ending in two turns. Bronzong does end up coming right back out. Are you going to pay back me? I'm not sure. Or Toxic? Uh, Tentacle still seems like the best play. As he goes for Rain Dance. Ah. Alright, so I definitely want that second layer. Uh, actually, huh. I think knocking off whatever's coming in. I don't want to knock off. He's going to boom here, right? He should boom here. I think that's his only other move. Dual screens plus rain. Wow. That is a huge threat. Yeah, so there's the boom. We get rid of Bronzong, and light screen only has a few more turns. Uh, Bronzong couldn't do any other move to me anyway, so it's expected that he would go right for the boom right there. He has a few more rain dance abusers as well. I'm pretty sure my Spadef Tentacruel should be able to take this guy on, or take it on decently well. Rather, at least force him to uh, drop a Draco on me. Which is what I want. He could have Dragon Pulse, though. I'm actually going to go right back out on my Tyranitar just to wear down this Kingdra and make my Flygon be, uh, make my Flygon be faster than it. Because Flygon's actually looking like a massive threat for my opponent. Especially since the other rain setters can't really deal too much, uh, too well with it. So, we'll pursue. 
uh, because Pursuit would have knocked him out even if he went for Rain Dance. I was thinking about keeping my Mon alive, but uh, what I can do now is go route to Flygon. Flygon does prevent anything from setting up Rain or outside of like a Rotom appliance, but we do have uh, Shaman, which deals with every Rain Pokemon left, and uh, Tentacruel plus a Scarf Rotom. So, uh, and the important part was we got rid of the screens and kept up our sand. So basically, I went Flygon because it has Fire Blast to threaten uh, something like. I want to say uh, something like uh, potentially a Scizor in the back. I'm pretty sure if I drop a Draco, we'll be able to knock him out. I don't want to risk that though. We'll go Tentacruel just in case he wants to Ice Punch because Ice Punch would also hit my Rotom. And uh, it's just still wearing down that Machamp. One more turn should be able to put Machamp in range of... Uh... Actually, I want, to knock, I want to knock it off 100%. I don't want him having Cuss that Berry. That would be annoying. I'm assuming he is Cuss that Berry. Uh, so we'll knock that off that way I can revenge kill him with Flygon and should potentially be or should it looks like a potential clean sweep and he was cussed that berry yep so it looks like it can be a clean sweep with uh, with Flygon we'll just get up a nice little nice little T-spike there as he is gonna go Dragonite and I don't want to risk this thing being Dragon Dance so the best play is going right out into my Rotom. I am Choice Scarf. Uh, I can hit it with the HP Ice. It is Dragon Dance. It makes sense because it was dual screens as well. He could be DD Yachi, but either way, uh, I do a ton of damage with the HP Ice anyway. Uh, the crit didn't matter. It's four times effective and whatnot. So his last Mon, I'm not sure what it is. Um, it might be a Ludicolo. Uh, it's dual screens. It could be anything. It ends up being a Metagross. Hmm. All right, so Flygon, if he's not Ice Punch, Flygon does it anyway. He's going to go for Agility right here. So if he's not Ice Punch, Flygon does eat one hit and can go for Earthquake, putting it in range of Thunderbolt. He has Ice Punch, unfortunately. But he's Life Orb, not Lumberry. So assuming I connect with this, uh, I hate to say that word. But yeah, uh, as, as long as I connect with this will o -Wisp, we should be good. As we do connect, we put that Metagross on a timer, and we're actually going to end up keeping my, um... Cuss that berry. If he's BP, I could still lose if he has Explosion. So what we do right here is we sack Tentacle, we keep Rotom alive. Maybe I should have actually kept, or maybe what I should have actually done was sack, uh... Sacked Rotom and then go hard and Shaman because Rotom will be able to outspeed Machamp and it does live a BP. So if he's BP Machamp and I lose my Machamp because of that, because he explodes right here, that's completely my fault. Yeah, that was uh, that was a bad end game uh, play to make. I should have stayed in with Rotom. Hold up, we're about to cop this real quick because we do have uh, Tentacruel. Custom sets, Machamp all out attacking, Will Punch is 6 to 8. Okay, so I still live, and then how much does Rotom take? 8 to 9%. Yep, so it's I can still keep uh, this Mon alive. Uh, as he goes for Zen Head, but... And he's going to go down. Uh, basically, I'm doing this just in case he has Explosion or crits my Shaman. Or freeze. Well, freeze it wouldn't matter because the Machamp goes down. But we'll go for Earth Power here. He doesn't have the Explosion and uh, doesn't end up freezing me. So that's going to be game anyway. So what I should have done, like I said, was stay in with uh, Rotom because uh, Rotom was in range of Bullet Punch. That was my fault for not calcing. Glad I knocked this thing's Assault Vest off, though. And we're going to be able to... Uh, assault Vest, wow. Cuss that berry off. What generation am I in? And we're going to be able to win the first one right there. So it is a best of three. Um, T-Spike's definitely putting in work. It seems a bit more defensive in nature. Lurgar, DPP. I just want to import it real quick. Where is this? Yeah, I like the way this team looks. And if this doesn't end up working for me, then I'll go back to the T-Spikes play style. But yeah, that last move, I, I should have count a uh, bullet punch from McChamp. Even though he was cussed at Barry, uh, and he could be Stone Edge Ice Punch, Dynamic Punch Payback. That was definitely an option. Did I import it? Yes. All right, let me load it up. 
Man, I knew you were gonna run. <laughs> Only other move you could have. But yeah, maybe hard, Kingdra. It'll work. That was really cool, though. That was a really cool um, team. I like the uh, combination of dual screens for a setup Agilagross, but also for Rain, which is so cool because Machamp, Mons with Rain and stuff, um, like Mons like that, they're just so threatening. Cup is a good way to learn. I didn't get to finish, but the one time I don't bring up, I always. Always, 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 always bring a Rose Raid or a Poison type. I'm so surprised he's, he brought this when I bring Poison types the entire time. But then again, uh, well, yeah, you, jo you join these things to still learn. So what I'm going to do is just BP just to break his, um, just to break his potential Sash. Oh, I guess he didn't think of me as being Akaberry. He goes right for T-Spike, which is fair. I should have actually Earthquake then if he thought I was Lumberry instead of Akka. But we're gonna earthquake. we can Earthquake here anyway. I can see him having like a Swampert in the back. Toss my Akaberry, so we're not going to go to sleep, and we'll be able to knock him out with the Earthquake. So Rose Raid is gone. Swampert in the back could happen. Uh, Heat Ran, definitely. Tran is uh, definitely something. Um, there is said Tran. I don't want to go hard into Tyranitar because I don't want to get a Stealth Rock. I'm actually just going to go for Earthquake. If he wants the Rocks, that's fine. I'd rather him knock me out, and then I get to go out to my, um, my Tyranitar and just fire off a Superpower on anything that wants to come in. You think he has Swamp? I think he might have Swampert. He, uh, Flamethrower is interesting. Doesn't tell me too much about this Tran. It could be a Protect Tran or whatnot. But right into my Lodic he goes, and that boy dies. <laughs> my Lodic just died. My Lodic just died. So, <laughs> my Lodic actually died. What the hell? Let me look at the teams I have real quick. Because <laughs> I might actually have this team. Uh, Gen 4 OU. I know I don't have too many Milotic teams. Yeah, five. Well, this is a different team completely. Milotic. I can't believe Milotic just died. Good lord. Gengar comes out, which is a huge threat, especially if it's Subgar. Jirachi should be able to take it on, though. Yep, goes for Sub. Hopefully I see Black Sludge and not Life Orb. I am 100% sure he is Life Orb now. Uh, so Gengar is going to be a problem, but hoping that a late game ape will be able to win this game for me. I could definitely see late game ape putting in some work. Uh, he could focus last here and do the exact same damage. I'll psychic regardless. Um, uh, Gengar is such a huge issue for me. Gengar is such a huge issue, and what we'll do is we'll actually make the uh, in front ape play here, and I don't like this because this is. <sighs> I hate messing around with threats. I really do. I think I'm just gonna fire blast. Yeah, I'm not gonna risk risk you turning on a Gengar. So we get rid of Gengar, and that's their close combat switch in Rose Raid plus uh, Gengar. I'm assuming uh, if he's if he has anything that's in the back that can switch into ape, it would be something like a flying type like Dra uh, Dragonite. But goes Heat Ran. Um, I don't want to go hard into Tyranitar because I expect him to Earth Power, especially because I showed um, both. Uh, Infernape and Titar, so I'll actually reveal the Gengar right here. As he does go right for that Earth Power, nice. And I do have Hidden Power Fire on this Gengar as well. And we are killed one Ghost type, so unless he's running double Ghost. Let's go right for the Focus Blast. As he goes right into Bronzong, I get an unfortunate Spadef drop too. And the problem with that is I can knock him out with the HP Fire now because it's 70 base power in this generation. So sorry about that Spadef drop, man. That, that was so lame. That's really lame for my opponent. Um, because now HP Fire 100% knocked him out. It's stronger than Shadow Ball. Uh, well, yeah, stronger than Shadow Ball even with stabs and Shadow Ball is 120. And Hidden Power being 70 base at the max um, just worked out better for me. And what I can do is just explode here if he wants to calm mine or sub or whatnot. Or just go right for Thunderbolt and knock me out. Yeah, we just go right out into our uh, our Tyranitar here and click Pursuit. 
because uh, Heatran is less of a threat than Raikou is uh, because I do have Scarfape as well as Kingdra in the back. So we click Pursuit here. Bandit Pursuit um, doesn't knock out Raikou, but it does put it in range of the sand. And unless this is... Yeah, I'm assuming it's Scarf or whatnot. Unless this is something like um, Chapo Heatran, we should be good. Uh, even if it is Chapel. I think I'd go hard Infernape here anyway. And just close combat. Because we are Scarf. Yep. And um, I thought it was Chapel though on that team. It was it was played like Scarf. Though Raikou could also be Scarf as well. I swear I had a team like this. Yeah. But Sans going to be able to knock him out. So I stay in here. Turns out he's not Scarf. And that's going to be a good game. So I end up winning 2-0 in round 3 of the DPP Cup. So um, next on we'll be taking on round 4. I'm actually... Uh, a little late in it because this game got an extension. Shout out to Jirachi uh, for giving us the extension. But is this DP Cup round? Yeah, yeah. So we're in uh, we're in round four now, and we end up playing uh, Lemaitre. I don't know how you say that name. Lemaitre. Lemaitre. I don't. I'll, I don't know how to say that name. But uh, yeah, good game. The shade. I definitely got. Uh, I played there. Um, I'll talk a little bit more with him off screen, but uh, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Of course, you can check out my previous videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, friends.